there, spooky friends, and welcome to another episode of Storytime with the Scariest Podcast. Woo! I didn't fuck it up. It's great. Hooray. I'm Robin Grace. This is Adam Diaz. Hello. And uh, we are here to read you folks some homegrown horrors. And uh, Adam will go all over the details of what those are. Homegrown horrors are the wonderful stories that you folks have sent us. And they are either spiritual, supernatural, paranormal, ghostly, sometimes coincidental, and sometimes true crime. Uh, and they're from you, the listener slash viewer, to us. Uh, it can be something that you have had happen to you, friend or family members had happened that you decide to share with us. And also you let us know, hey, you can go ahead and share this on the show. Some folks send us those types of stories and say, please don't share this. Uh, and we totally understand that. You're just looking to bounce it off of someone. But for folks who would like to share, Robin, how can they do so? You can go to our website, scariest.com. We have a contact us page. You can fill out the form there and it'll get to us that way. You can email us directly at storytime at scariest.com or reach out to us at any of our different social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. We get stories from all over uh, and we really appreciate it. Indeed we do. So thank you to everyone who sent in their stories for this episode. We appreciate it. We're actually going to have three. We're going to have one medium one very long, and then another medium to long. Um, so we're going to go... I think Robin's reading the long one. So it's going to go me, Robin, commercial break. Robin finishes, and then me again. So that's how we're going to go. Okay, so I'm going first, and I'm going to go ahead and get into the first one of the show. And this one's subject is hyperventilation because I saw something spooky. It's a All pretty right. good subject. I hope you're okay. Hyperventilation sucks. Have you ever hyperventilated? No, but... That's um, shocking to me. You've never just, hyperventilated. Just the other day, my aunt went uh, was talking about how she went to a movie with my younger sister, and it was a scary movie. Uh, I forget what movie it was, but... I'm pretty sure it wasn't even that scary of a movie when you told me what it was at the time. But my sister, my sister was, like, almost hyperventilating, hyperventilating ventilating in the movie theater, uh, and I just thought it was the funniest thing, because I've never been to a movie theater... Even watching a horror movie where I was like, oh, God, I'm going to die. <laughs> it was just so funny. Let's see what happens in the email and see if that's worthy of hyperventilation, according to us. Starts out like this. Greetings, Adam and Robin. Greetings. Greetings. Says, hope I spelled that right. You did indeed. I'm Grayson. What's up, Grayson? Hello. You have a wonderful name. I have some scary stories and spooky things that have happened to me, so I decided to share. I have listened to the podcast for a bit. Can you please share this on the podcast? Yeah. Well, yeah, there right, you go. Who goes the Hello. dynamite? If you share this on the podcast, I promise you I will probably cry because I would be so happy. Well, hopefully you don't cry or hyperventilate. Uh, sorry for any spelling errors. No worries. So here we go. The story. It was really late on a Friday night and I had just rearranged and repainted my room so I wasn't... Motorcycles. God, I fucking hate motorcycles so much. You don't actually hate them. I hate the ones that go by the house. I always say it. I hate the ones that go by the house and it's like, Bruh! there's construction out there. I hope he hits a fucking cone. Just saying. <laughs> All right. It was really late on a Friday night and I had just rearranged and repaired my room. So I wasn't used to it. Plus, I had no lights on. My altar. Hmm. There's an altar in this room. My altar was moved to the floor in an old wooden case. I'm an eclectic witch so i have spoken to some of entities plus the day plus that day i had run out of sage okay so that just took a weird turn uh okay back on topic i had three candles going one being a protective candle spell i put the other two out and let the protective one keep burning i hopped into my bed and started watching criminal minds and then decided to head to sleep around 1 a.m i mean it's pretty awesome. I love Criminal Minds. So. I really liked Criminal Minds. I was really sad when that one character got kicked off the show for the kicking from, the writer or whatever. Uh, what Greg is... from Dharma and Greg. Yeah. Yeah, that was sad. Uh, it continues. The candle was still burning. I fell asleep for 13 minutes exactly. P.S. I'm paranoid and have major anxiety. I sometimes get ticks where I can't control my arms uh, when it gets very bad. I think those things together would also probably not help in the whole hyperventilation situation yeah. like if you have anxiety and stuff like that you're just like i don't know how to deal with this and you just you know you kind of start panicking and that's my favorite schoolhouse rock song by the way what? hyperventilation situation is that what you said conjunction junction what's your function Get out. whatever okay it continues i sat in my bed and stared straight forward and looked at the wall 
I started to shake my head to not freak out because it was pitch black besides the candle light in the corner. I sat there for about an hour staring at the wall. Then I saw something move fast out of the corner of my eye and go under my bed. Then I heard scratching at the door. I brushed it off as one of my cats and then realized my door was closed and my cats are trying to get into my room. All right. My candle went out at halfway and I thought that is not good at the time. It made my room so dark and I'm deathly afraid of the dark. I started freaking out and crying because what was in my room and how did it get in and will it kill me? I sat there, freaked out for an hour or two and then saw it again and I continued to see it and then I had a panic attack. That there's the the hyperventilation. It's yeah. like seriously when you have anxiety on top of all that stuff it's just like immediately if something goes wrong you're like what is going on you have to like do these exercises to calm yourself down and tell yourself everything's gonna be okay uh i couldn't control my arms and hyperventilated till i passed out but the weird part that wasn't the weird part the weird part is i felt like i was being watched from different parts of the room as the thing moved p.s i was fine just overreacting by the way, this was five days after I played the Ouija board and met a child with a dog what? named JC and Cass. <laughs> Thank you for reading. Love you guys. Hope you share. <laughs> That's a really weird way to end it. And right? Not it's like, like you oh, by the way. You started the story with that. <laughs> I feel like you need to send us another email that covers when you played with the Ouija board and how that experience went. So, either way, thank you so much for sending in that story. Yeah, it's just funny because it's just like, oh, by the way, I did play with a Ouija board, you know, and I met this kid. And, right. And I feel like when it comes to Ouija boards, a lot of the time, it's not a kid. Burning, yeah, seriously. Burning candles, too, like protective candles or any type of candles, when they go out halfway down, it ranges from frustrating to really, really creepy. So, when it but when it goes out halfway and then you start seeing creepy stuff in your room, yeah, I could see being freaked out about that. I hate so. candles going out halfway because it's just a waste of money. <laughs> So you have to do stuff where you like turn on its side. And then you gotta, it just like, depends uh, on the kind of candle, yeah. like just to get to the wick, all the stuff you have to do. Anyways, thank you so much for sending that in. All right. I'm going to go into the next email here. Again, I'm going to reiterate that we are going to split this email somewhere in the middle for the commercial break, and then we'll continue it after the commercial break. And here we go. Good evening. Adam, Robin, Spooky Mom, and to all the spookers. Those are you guys. <laughs> Hello. Uh, some of you may have seen me in the podcast as Chicka Chicka Boom Boom 18. I wonder if they're here today. I, I, I haven't seen them yet, but they're here most of the time. My real name is Kiana. Oh, pronounced. Okay, cool. I pronounced it right. It's like pronounced like Keanu, but with an A at the end. Kiana. Nailed it. Nice. Uh, I wonder if people actually pronounce that wrong. I just assume it's Kiana. Okay. Chicka Chicka Boom Boom over there in the chat said, oh my God, a million times. And then a bunch of incoherent <laughs> letters. I wish I could tell you that my mother named me after the most romantic badass of all time. But in truth, my name was inspired from a cereal box. What? <laughs> How? I've been listening to you guys for about a year now. And I've been subscribing on Twitch for nine-ish, no pun intended, months and i have to say that this is my absolute favorite podcast thank you so much thank you i found you guys first on google music but nah bra the playback and list order always mess up so it sucked i then found out that google podcast was a thing so i moved over but seriously i need to try spotify so the only problem with spotify is that they run their own ads so when you listen on spotify you listen to our ads and you listen to their ads and so it's just ads on top of ads which is kind of poopy not that bad, but, but realistically... if you would like no ads, you can just go to Patreon, patreon.com. And sometimes if you binge them in a row, you don't wind up getting ads like between the episodes, except for the ones that we run at the end. Um, there was uh, one other thing I was going to say. Uh, Spotify is nice because it carries over your progress. So if oh, you are oh, binging, anywhere you go. Yeah, you yeah. can move from your car to your computer. I know I say this all the fucking time. You can move from your car to the computer. It knows exactly where you left it off. Google Podcasts isn't as good, but I still do use Google Podcasts. Uh, I hope you guys don't mind that I format my stories as if you're reading a book, but don't uh, don't count on it being perfect because who takes AP English or creative writing courses? I sure didn't, but props to whoever did. I did. Um, I took, did I take AP English? I don't know. I, I definitely didn't take creative writing. I took a lot of English classes. I think I took AP World History, but like ended up watching Korean drama the entire time because our teacher quit. Wow. <laughs> uh, still passed. Anyway. How could you not pass when you were just doing nothing but watching <laughs> Korean dramas? Uh, I'm sorry in advance that this story has mistakes. Thank you, Spooky Mom, for fixing my horrendous errors. Unfortunately, she didn't edit it this week. We'll still say thank but you. But we'll to her, still though. say thank you because she worked really hard and is was doing She's that hockey game. Probably still in the air right now. Man, just just put a puck through that put a net. Puck. 
I don't know, in hockey. How do you do it? Put a puck past that goalie. Yeah. That. In that game. <laughs> Clap them cheeks. I'm I, pretty sure that one applies to You know to hockey. what's what's funny about idioms is uh-huh. I just taught Adam one today because I was like, man, I'm dog tired. And he's like, what never, is dog I've never heard tired? Dog tired before. I was like, I know an idiom you don't know? I've heard like dogs uh. are barking, so I don't know. I have a series of stories that are true from my personal experience as, as well as family experiences that I can't wait for you to read. So here we go. Get your favorite blanket, flashlight, that's right, Robin, turn off the room light, not going to happen, and adult huh. diaper because this first story is going to make you shit your pants. Let me go ahead and get my blanket ready. Okay. Oh, God. Ready. <laughs> You're going to bring all the boys to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> or no, it's wait, what is it? You crack, <laughs> you crack one for the boys? Crack I don't one know. The boys. Anyway, okay. So chapter one, the ominous visit of the departed. It was a chilled winter night in February 2014. As my parents, younger brother, and I slept soundly in our two-story home located in the older parts of Chula Vista, California, or as many refer to the city, Chula Juana. Ah, oh, that's cute. Like Tijuana. like Tijuana. It was the middle of the night as the neighborhood was silent and we were sound asleep when suddenly I was jolted awake by the sound of our smoke detector. The blaring noise that usually would not be a big deal during the day became a shrieking banshee that disrupted the neighborhood and caused the nearby dogs to start barking. Groggy and grumpy, I car jumped out of bed with my pillow to start waving over the smoke detector that was in the upstairs hallway just outside of my bedroom. However, this detector would not shut off. As I continued waving my pillow over the detector, my parents rushed downstairs to check the other smoke detectors that were in the kitchen, living room, and garage. All the detectors were on at the same time. We thankfully managed to get them all turned off and began to inspect the house to find any reason the smoke detectors would go off. There was no sight of smoke to be seen nor flame that was lit for such commotion. I have read in the past that there have been instances where a heavy fog could cause the detectors to go off, but all the windows and doors to the house were closed and locked. The system also didn't detect anything, so my parents and I headed back to bed. Where was my brother, you ask? Sound asleep like a bear in deep hibernation mode. What the fuck? (laughs) I am that person. I am totally the deep (laughs) sleeper who will just keep sleeping. If someone tells me it's okay, I'm just like, whatever. My sister um, woke me up yesterday by going... Psst, psst, hey. <laughs> and it actually woke me up. I was very surprised because normally I don't wake up from whispers like that. Um, or like if the dog's throwing up, I don't even wake up. She it's really hard for noise. me to. Yeah, she doesn't I even mean... wake up. She hears it and she goes back to sleep. She's a liar. <laughs> it's very hard for me to wake up sometimes. Like That is true, though. Uh, the only thing usually that, w- it, even alarms, if alarms go off, like my phone or, or, or Alexa or whatever, is uh, have an alarm set. Oh, man. Good luck waking me up. Uh, sometimes it goes off for like five or ten minutes and then I wake up, which is annoying. I'm sorry to everybody. <laughs> to everybody. Um, right about now, you're thinking, that's it? That was the scary part? Nah, bruh. It gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> As we settled in our beds and snuggled into a slumber, the bitch blazing banshees began to wail again. I groaned in frustration as I got up a second time to check the detectors, but this time, just as I opened the door, the screeching detectors ceased. This was getting weird. I asked my dad, Dad, are the batteries dead on the detectors? He replied, No, I just replaced them yesterday. That Um, sounds suspect to me. Sounds like your dad fucked up the detectors, just saying. That's rude. (laughs) It happens to the best of us. I fucked up detectors before by putting in dead batteries. Your mom was helping me with them. My mother nodded in agreement. I was only the assistant, also known as blaming the dad for the real problems. (laughs) That's so funny. (laughs) Uh, We then parted ways to head back to our rooms when a third time they started again. We were all still in the hallway, and as we looked at each other, we locked eyes and jinxed when all three of us said carbon monoxide. This is where we enter panic mode. My dad began to dial 911. My mom went to get the keys to the car, and I went to wake up my brother since I was closer to his room. As I opened the door, his room was icy cold. Uh, It was so icy cold that all the hair on my body began to stand up. I pay no mind to it, seeing that I must haul my brother out of bed and out the door as fast as possible. We all make it out okay. The blaring siren of the fire department rig arrives to our cul-de-sac four minutes after my dad calls them. The house is silent at this time, and four of us are wrapped up in our blankets at our driveway. The fire chief comes over and talks to my dad regarding his call. 
Just as my father mentions carbon monoxide, the detectors began shrieking from my house for the fourth time. It startled me so much because I did not expect it, and for some reason, it sent chills down my spine. The firemen attached their masks and proceeded to our home to check for the deadly gas that could have claimed our lives had we not acted fast. 20 minutes later, the firemen exited our home and the fire chief spoke to my father. His face began to grow pale. My brother, mother, and I were in the car resting during their search, but I got out to see what they found. I looked at the fire chief and go, was there carbon monoxide present in the home? My father simply stated, there was no sign we were ever in danger. It's creepy. The chief checked all the batteries and the detectors and added that the machines were not faulty either. So in the end, there wouldn't have been any reason for the detectors to go off. The firemen added other detectors as a precaution and deemed the home safe for living. The fire department left and we entered our home and back to bed. There was no longer a disturbance in our dwelling for the rest of the night. And uh, we'll take a break here for a quick commercial. Right on. So here comes the commercial. Welcome back from the commercial. This is how we start the next part of the story. Okay, anyway, here go. All right. That was amazing. Thanks. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, Nelly Furtado was in the room with us. I don't, what's a good song by Nelly Furtado? I'm like a bird on a flyway. Oh, wow. Old school. Yeah. It's like 80s. I think that... Is every, it 90s? No, no, no. Maybe early 2000s. I think it's early 2000s, but I don't know. Uh, spoiler alert. Okay, wait. I'm just going to get back. Okay. This is the worst transition <laughs> you've ever had. Shit. At least you attempted it, though, so I'm leaving this whole thing in. Spoiler alert. We made it through the night, and we are all doing okay. My dad ended up buying new batteries and changing them as a precaution. Keep reading. There's more. We should have stopped there. Damn, Damn it. it. Maybe I can edit that. I'm not editing that. Never mind. The day after, all four of us were in the kitchen eating dinner when my mom receives a phone call from my aunt. At first, she seems happy to hear from her, but as the conversation went on, her face became sad and her eyes with tears. After she hung up from the phone, uh, hung up the phone from my aunt, hung up from the, I don't even know. Sorry, phone. Fuck you. Bye. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> After she hung up the phone from my aunt, she came over to the table, drying her tears. I asked mom, what's wrong? Is everything okay? She replied with grief. My sister called to tell me that our friend from high school passed away with his family inside their home a few nights ago. They just found them today. That is scary because they're all their alarms right. in their house went off. Uh, my family friend that my mom referred to is a family that my mother's family knew all too well. They were, in a way, street neighbors that grew up uh, that they grew up with and went to school together. I also knew of them because I went to school with their children that were my age. This family is a big family that is very well known in town. A family so close-knit, they bought houses next to each other, and the street they lived on was named after their last name. This friend and his family did not live on the last name street. Out of respect for this family, I will not reveal their last name, but I will reveal to you this bit of information. There were four family members that were found in their home, and they died from carbon monoxide poisoning. There was a leak in their water heater. The saddest parts about this, it was a mother and father with their two young children who passed. There were no carbon monoxide detectors in their home. That's pretty creepy. That's really, um, it's just really sad Yeah. that they didn't have, I wonder if we have one. We do. Those okay. are smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Are you sure? Because I'm 100% sure. Okay, well you did unplug ours. It's sitting somewhere. In our bedroom. The rest of them are still fine. So unless the leak is only in our bedroom, which could happen. It's going to come okay. out of your ass. All I know is it does fuck you. <laughs> All I know is that they don't stop going off in the middle of the night sometimes. And it might be detecting carbon monoxide, but none of the other ones go off. So it's just broken. Just saying. Epilogue. It's been... <laughs> what? Your voice is just the breathy. Epilogue. You gave me so much shit for my Tally Poe voice or Tally Poe voice yesterday. So just... Tally Poe. Tally Poe. I don't even know what I sound like. I'm so tired right now. I was so tired Mr. last night, too. Mr. Popo. Oh, yeah. That's right. You accused me of sounding like Mr. Popo. All right, epilogue. It's been six years since this happened, and I can truly tell you that the coincidence of the events that happened within the days or nights apart is uncanny, 
chilling, and scary. I would like to think that the family friend of my mom came to our home and wanted to check that our detectors were working as they should before they left into the unknown. This family of four leave behind two older children who are on missions at the time, and to see them grow strong as siblings is truly inspiring. That's really cool. Yeah, it that is. That they, they kind of grew, you know, afterwards. And, and you have to try and turn tragedy, not to your advantage, but, like, to use it as a motivating factor to, like, grow as a person. Because sometimes it's just so hard to deal with, so. The family of the deceased, and I mean all the family, made it known that their family members did not die in vain. They've been hosting an annual memorial three-on-three basketball tournament and started a foundation that aims to educate the community about the importance of detectors in the home and the threat of carbon monoxide poisoning. That is so stinking cool. Yeah. Uh, The foundation gives out detectors and information also. They want to be able to save other families' lives. They often receive letters from people whose lives were saved from the detectors they were given from the foundation. That's awesome. It really is awesome. To Adam and Robin, that's us. Uh, Thank you so much for your podcast. I've had some hard times these past few years. And when I started on my first day at my current job a year ago, you guys were the first ones I listened to in order to get through the toughest and busiest of days. You guys are seriously one of the reasons I'm laughing more and smiling more when... Uh, than I was a year ago. I cannot thank you enough. I have more stories that I'm going to share to you all. Hope you're all being safe during this weird time. I will probably keep the story format and wish you all happiness, love, and that you are all washing your hands. (laughs) And if this story wasn't clear enough, please check your detectors. Until then, chicka chicka boom boom. 18. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for sending Um, it in. That's extremely well written. You never think about it, though, when it comes to carbon monoxide uh, detectors, because like, I didn't know if ours were or not. I didn't know if we had any um, because you just don't think about it. And and, and any time we've been in an apartment where they were like, we're going to do a carbon monoxide test and they put those little sensors in your um, apartment or whatever, you don't really think about it, right? You're just like, eh, it's not going to... I will say since I worked at Tesla, that's one of the things I think about because getting to know a lot of places and installing solar projects, there's a lot of inspections that have to happen during those projects. And one of them is there's a lot of cities on the East Coast and on the West Coast that need to inspect the home. The fire department actually has to come and inspect the home to make sure that all the detectors are working correctly. Um, And there's a lot of places around the country, and it might be in your local authority that has jurisdiction over your area, but the fire department, and I I think that was the case with Chicka Chicka Boom Boom here too, um, they'll install detectors for free. Um, Really? Yeah, it's a service that they provide. It's not everywhere, but some places do that. Uh, just to make sure that people are protected from it. And you can ask them to come out and perform an inspection. There might be a cost for the inspection just to make sure that they work. Um, and I do think about that a lot because of the one detector that won't shut the fuck up. And then we had one in the office that exploded. The battery inside it was so old, it corroded and exploded. And that sent, like, that Robin into a panic spiral. That out of me. So I, I, do, I do think about it. And I hope uh, everyone out there that wherever you're living... <laughs> You have working uh, detectors, smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors. And as someone in our chat said, bullshit detectors also, uh, because that goes a long way. Um, But seriously, it's it's an important thing. And protect your family. Protect yourself if you live alone. But uh, yeah, check those things out. They all have a test feature on them. You can run them so they can just all go off at the same time. So uh, just something to keep in mind. And I know it might seem like something that's simple and trivial, but it can literally save your life. So thank you so much for sending that in. Like I mentioned, it was really well written, and now you need to send the rest of your stories into us like you said you would. So, right on. All right, so I'm going to move into my last and the last story of the show. This one subject is homegrown horror. So, we know what we're getting into with it. Starts out like this. (laughs) You're so stupid. Hello, Adam and Robin. Hello. Hello. That was loud. Whoa. It was. I'm Christine, and I am kind of new to y'all's podcast, and I'm listening to you guys from Spotify. Shout out Spotify. I found the podcast while searching for a scary theme podcast to listen to because I absolutely love scary things, even though I end up scaring myself sometimes. To be honest, I'm not up to date with the most recent episodes of the podcast because I wanted to listen from the very beginning, and as I'm typing this, I'm currently listening to episode 8. Aw, nice. Pretty sure that's the Mondo episode, uh, which is our first guest we ever had. I'm a young teenager, (laughs) and I haven't experienced many scary things in my life so far. But I have had a few spooky experiences, but I would love to share one with you guys because I love y'all's reaction to listener stories. It's, what's funny is like, I'm just like, I'm a middle-aged lady. What right. up? <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> the email goes on. I live in a Mexican household and growing up in this kind of environment, most of the time you get told things like, quote, if you don't listen, La Lucheza, it's pronounced as it's spelled, just to let you guys know, smiley face. I think I covered that. I don't think they've gotten there yet. Is going to get you. And I'm not sure if you guys have done an episode on the Lucheza. We have. 
Uh, you keep saying it backwards. Lechuza, fucking A, <laughs> is basically a witch that turns into an owl and takes kids in the night that misbehave, as well as couples that fight when one of them runs out. I remember that part. I put that last part in. When I was younger, my tia and my male cousins used to live in the house with me, my mom, and my grandma. My grandma owns a stuffed animal monkey that my tio had got her from the circus, and from what I've heard, bad spirits tend to come from the circus. For as long as I could remember, whenever me and my cousins would act up when I was younger, she would always tell us that the monkey would get us in the night if we didn't behave. You know, I grew up with a lot of Puerto Rican and Mexican families, and I just remember they all had their own, like, home boogeyman and it was just so funny to see like you go from house to house to see like which statue or which stuffed animal was the thing that was going to haunt you at night if you didn't behave i've never heard of evil things coming from the circus before i haven't heard of evil things coming from the circus but it might just be a cultural thing american horror story it might be just be dependent on the circus you go to you never know it goes on. Now, from what I understand, we would... I mean, okay, I gotta go back to this, but, I mean, if you're going to the circus and they have that, like, that donut chicken sandwich or whatever, have you ever seen that? Or the donut burgers where they cut a glazed donut in half and put a burger in it? The first place I ever saw that was a state fair or a circus or something like that. And I was like, weird. That is disgusting and it's I only could, designed to well, kill people. That seems pretty evil to me, too. I could see that um, being a breakfast sandwich, you know, putting, like, sausage and egg in the middle of your donut. Maybe. So you got... Because, hello... Yeah, Dunkin' Donuts won't even do that, so... So it's like, um... One of those things that McDonald's... They're yes. completely different. That's like a pancake sandwich. Yeah, exactly. Your donut turns into a little pancake. It's too little much. little pancake sandwich. Okay. Pancake sandwiches are pure, and donut sandwiches what are What if evil. it was a maple donut? Like one of those maple log ones? Disgusting. You're just going way off the rails. And you put problem. bacon inside? Nope. No one's on board with this. Mm. Please don't be on board with this. All right. Gonna keep going now. Now, from what I understand, we would believe it because many times my grandma has told us that the monkey has done things to her. An example of one of the things she told us the monkey has done was that he has locked her in her room. That's creepy. I sort of believed her, but from what I remember, I was never totally scared of the monkey. The monkey is placed in my grandmother's room whenever I would go in there, whether it was to go to the restroom or to lay down on my grandma's bed, I was never really frightened by it. It reminds me of that doll. Um, I forget what Annabelle? the... New... Annabelle? New... If, was the doll's name Harold? The, the the doll that that one guy had, he owned, and it did weird things, and it scared people. Oh, Jeff Dunham. I don't know which one you're talking about, to be honest with you. I did a topic. Robert. Robert the doll. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and name. supposedly it did strange things, and, it, you know, he was kind of obsessed with it, and uh, I, that this is what that reminds. This reminds me of that. Well, let's see if it ends the same way. Uh, they go on to say, I once had a dream about the monkey. After the dream, I was officially scared of the thing. I don't exactly remember when this dream took place, maybe a year or two ago, but I know it wasn't an old dream. The dream takes place in my house. I was sitting in the living room of my house, mad because apparently in the dream I was supposed to go to the beach. For some reason, I didn't pack my stuff for the beach, and my mom told me that if I didn't hurry, her and my family were going to leave without me. Keep in mind, I was supposed to leave to the beach that day in the dream. I think it's funny the way your dreams change the older you get. Because, yeah. like, I remember having the dreams where, like, people were going to leave me behind. And now that's, like, my dream when I'm awake. Like, please just leave me at home alone. I don't want to fucking do anything anymore. My dreams as a kid, you have those weird, scary dreams. And then as uh, in my early 20s, all my dreams were like, oh, my God, I'm late for work. <laughs> yeah, my dreams now are of college. Like, getting to class and realizing I don't remember anything about the class. And I'm at the end of the semester. And have I already failed? Can I salvage my grade? And then I wake up and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so happy I graduated. And then I remember my student loan debt and I just have another nightmare. So, okay, I'm oh, going to keep going with this email Wait till my student now. loan debt starts I'm to... going to keep going with this okay, email go. Before I continue, I want to explain the layout of my house real quick so it's more understandable. I live in a trailer home where when you walk into the house, you enter the living room. On the left of the living room is the kitchen slash dining area. And on the left of the kitchen slash dining area is my grandma's room which is the end of the left side of the house. When you leave my grandma's room, there's an area that goes straight through the dining area into the living room, which perfectly lines up with one of the couches. I'm sorry if this didn't make sense. Feel free to ask questions, but that is the best way I can think of how to explain it in the moment. I think that totally makes sense. Continuing. In the dream, I sat on the couch that perfectly lines up with my grandma's room entrance, being mad as my mom and family were putting stuff in her car outside. I looked up to see my grandma's room door open, and the room was pitch black. 
In the dream, it was daytime, and normally light would light up the room. <laughs> Actually, this is the best type I've ever seen. In the bitch black room, which is the best way you could call something if there's something evil in there. Yeah. I could see a stack of clothes on my grandma's bed, and on top of the clothes was the stuffed monkey. Immediately, as soon as I looked at the monkey, the stack of clothes fell off the bed. No Along with the monkey, way. and the monkey started clawing its way towards me, saying beware repeatedly in a somewhat high-pitched voice that's terrifying in the dream i freaked out and my mom came in and asked what happened and for me that was the end of the dream because i don't remember what happened after that ever since the dream i have been completely scared of that monkey and every time i enter my grandmother's room especially if i'm by myself in the room or in the late evening i try my very best not to make eye contact with the stuffed animal I'm very sorry this is long, but I just had to tell you guys this story because, as I've said before, I love y'all's reaction to stories. I hope you guys read this, and thank you for making me laugh and spooked at the same time. Please continue doing the great work and love you both. Well, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much for sending that in. I think stuffed animals in general are just kind of creepy, and the fact that your aunt tells you, like, this came from the circus, and it's haunted, and it's going to get you probably didn't help. It's kind of funny that you were not scared of this Did- thing to start, but then you have this dream, and all of a sudden you're like, no, no, no. That thing's fucking evil. Did the monkey have symbols where it goes like... Clang, clang. Yeah. I thought at first you Those meant like, scary. like sigils like carved into its body when you said symbols. What the... <laughs> Shut up. See what I mean? Yeah. That's, you know, that's same even word. scarier. Yeah, okay. it was terrifying at first. Um, no, so I was... Uh, it, when I play Fallout, there's those monkeys, right? There's those monkeys you can find around that their eyes turn red and they just start clanging, clanging their the symbols. symbols together. And that scares me. The idea of a monkey that you just find in random places with symbols in its... I don't know why, but it's scary. <laughs> so there you go. You'll have to let us know more about this monkey and, you know, haunt Robin's dreams. No. I'm not a big fan of the, the monkeys. You mean the band now? we talking about the band? Oh, is there a band called the monkeys? Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. We feel like monkeying around. I think those are the lyrics. That's the only song I know from them. No, I don't mean the band. I mean monkey monkeys. I think monkeys. the monkeys sing Let the Bodies think... Hit the Floor. Oh, my God. No. So monkeys are very much like us, right? And I think that weirds me out the most. Because they... They look very human in the things they do. They do... The things that they do are very human. Have you ever seen the monkeys just... take, like, the long piece of grass and put it down, like, the ant hill? And the ants cling to the grass oh, and, then and it pulls eats it out it? and it eats it? Yeah, yeah. Genius. I'm like, damn, dude. I wouldn't have thought of that. And I love to eat ants. Not really. But still, I, I wouldn't have thought of that, so... <laughs> You're fucking stupid. Anyways, thank you for sending in your email. We appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. So thank you to everyone who sent in their stories this week. We sincerely appreciate it. And if any of you wonderful folks out there listening or watching have a story that you would like to submit to us, please email storytimeofscarish.com or you can go to our website, scarish.com, and click on contact us. Fill out that form. It comes directly to us. Or you can hit us up on any of our social medias. Facebook is facebook.com slash scarishpodcast. Twitter is at scarishpod and Instagram is at scarishpodcast. You can also join us on Discord if you would like. Just go to scarish.com. On the right-hand side, if you scroll down, are links to all of our social medias. And at the top of the page, there's a little scrolling thing that says, Join us on Discord. Go into that, click on the link, and it'll take you straight there. It's a chat room app with a bunch of chat rooms where you can chat. And uh, it's really fun. We have a lot of channels for a bunch of different things. It's a nice time. You can drop your homegrown horror in there as well if you want some instantaneous reaction, uh, which is a good time. So we hope to see you there. Robin, for folks who would like to donate to us, how can they do so? You can go to patreon.com slash scarish podcast. Uh, those are monthly donations, whole bunch of different tiers. They start at a dollar and that includes ad free access. So if you don't want any ads and want to just hear us straight up chit chat, uh, go head on over there. Uh, and right now, I, ha- I still have a couple Mothman keychains left. I want to thank everyone who's become a patron this past few weeks. You guys are absolutely awesome. And I just uh, hope you folks enjoy it. <laughs> Indeed. So I think that's just about everything we have for this episode of Storytime, number 131. So Robin, go ahead and sign us out. Keep on creeping on and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.